afternoon from beautiful Kelowna, British Columbia with Amon and Beck. Hello, hello friends. Hi everybody. So they're van lifers and fellow YouTubers that are currently visiting here in Kelowna, BC. And uh, I figured this would be a great time to sit down with them and ask them some van life questions because how long have you guys been on the road for? A uh, little over a year and a half now. Yeah. Yes. And Matt and I are thinking of joining Hashtag Van Life. Do so it. exciting! My cheeks are already hurting because it's like <laughs> when I hang out with someone who's excited about it, I love chatting about it, getting them on board. Like, let's do it, guys. Let's go to Europe. Let's bring our camper vans and just make Literally, it go. Literally, yesterday of it. we met Germans that shipped their van over here. So now we're like, mm, Van Life in Europe? <laughs> you guys want to come? I have a lot of questions to ask you guys the things that I'd like to know and that I'm sure some of you guys would like to know if you were thinking of joining the van life. So I'm super excited to get started, but make sure you guys stay around to the ending because we're gonna do a van tour. First off, yes, I wanna know what inspired you guys mm -hmm. to jump into van life. We have, I feel like, such a long story with van life. The first part of van life being when we were in New Zealand, we spent two months in a little camper there and just loved, we called it backpacking 2.0 because it was going from backpacking, unpacking your bag every day, doing that whole spiel, to coming home and having everything where it was when you left for your adventure that morning and making a cup of tea and having dinner um, made for you a home cooked meal that sometimes you just start craving when you're yeah. traveling a lot. And especially in New Zealand, like van life in New Zealand is amazing. It's oh. such a great way to explore the islands. At, around every cur kern, every turn, we were <laughs> stopping and taking photos yeah. and we just loved it there. So we already had that in the back of our heads of like, yeah. we loved van life. And then... Or camper van life. Yeah. And then we, we started a tea business when we returned to Toronto. We have videos on our story and stuff like that if you want more details. Mm -hmm. um, but basically, started the company and grew it to a really great size within Toronto, Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Um, Bella Canyon. <laughs> yes. And so there was no way for us to, or we couldn't afford to fly, I'm the sales guy, to fly me to Montreal and Ottawa and new markets. And so we kind of thought like, hey, like why don't we do this in a van? And so originally it was it was a business idea. And very much your idea, let's be real. Like I yeah. was, like I liked the idea of it, but I was also maybe ready to, I don't know, settle down? I hate those words. <laughs> yeah, but you yeah, know, I was yeah, kind of yeah. like ready to have our own space and I didn't know what that would look like, but yeah. then he went out and was test driving vans without me and then presented me this beautiful idea of like, look, it's a sprinter van, you can stand up in it, this will be our layout. He had I know, I know how to sell her. Yeah, you know? he's, so he's a sales sure guy, had, he just yeah. said that, right? So I he knew what to do. And that mixed with Toronto housing prices were so yeah. expensive at the time. Renting was almost impossible at the time, so it just felt like, okay. Let's do it, let's try it. Yeah. So you guys live in a van full time. This is full time. Full time. Our house. So we're kind of on the fence about, I think it, for us, yeah. if we were to do van life, it would be kind of a couple months at a time. Adventure rig. Adventure rig. Yeah. yeah. So obviously there's pros and cons of full time versus not full time. Yeah. What are some of the things that you'd recommend if someone was thinking of it full time, that they should look into versus if they were like me and they were just thinking of it for like kind of like a summer camping vehicle. Sure. I think the van itself is probably the number one thing that mm. you want to look at versus full time versus part time. So we went with a sprinter van. It's a high top. Eamon and I are both really tall human beings. You don't have that issue, Nadine. You're so lucky. But I mean, we needed <laughs> oh, it to, yeah, to stand up and have yeah. have it feel like a home when mm. it's full time as opposed to the camper, which is it's okay and if you're hunched over. Stand up, right? Not just yeah. a pop top where you could set it up when you're camping. Yeah. Like we can stand in this all the time. Yeah, so we could be driving and I could have to get back here for something and you're not crawling. And I think that's probably one of the things that makes it from camper to home. And then just having like the fixed stuff that we have. So a lot of van lifers will have pull out stove tops and mm. things like that. And all yeah. of those things are okay if you're doing it for two months, a couple of weeks. Yeah. It's kind of novelty and fun to be honest. Yeah. But when you're full time, it's like, okay, who's getting up and putting on the hot water this morning? You don't have to. You want to have a spot for everything too, right? So we have like our Vitamix like mounted there. So we're using it. It's not like in the bottom underneath a bed where you got to like take the bed apart and grab the yeah. Vitamix when you make a smoothie. Yeah. So just a little bit more permanent Mentality about and, and, everything. And, uh, yeah, mentality. Yeah, but I think it's an amazing way to start. Like we started camper life mm -hmm. by just renting in New Zealand and testing it out and seeing if it was something we liked and obviously yeah. we loved it. So it was, uh, yeah, yeah. I can imagine there'd be quite a lot of changes from going 
living in a house or apartment and then moving full time to van life. So what were some of the biggest changes that you had to adapt to mm. when you like living full time in a van? Sure. I mean not showering every day. <laughs> I was gonna say I was like, there's no shower here. Yeah, there's no shower, Water. there's no toilet. Yeah. When we go when we go visit friends and family and we can use or even at our office space in Toronto yeah. and we can use running water that's hot. hot oh water my to gosh. do the dishes. I like thoroughly enjoy doing dishes now <laughs> with hot water. So it actually really makes you appreciate a lot of things. But yeah. I think the biggest thing is maybe the downsizing mentality. A lot mm. of people have a lot more stuff than can fit in a van. Yeah. But for us, we were backpackers before. So, so like, this felt like this such is an upgrade. Beck's closet. Can they see this? Yeah, they can see it. So like that's everything Beck has to wear. Like everything I own. That is something to be aware of for sure. Yeah. That was my hardest thing. I love pajama t-shirts. <laughs> I get rid of them all. <laughs> I had a lot of pajama t-shirts. <laughs> Aren't they so comfy? I'm like, like yeah, that's a pajama shirt, that's mm -hmm. a pajama shirt. Yeah. <laughs> Aside from like hot water and showers, is yeah. there something that you like really, really miss? We both love hosting, mm -hmm. so we still do it a ton. Like we are constantly packed out with people in here. We'll feed eight people in here, but it's a different thing to not well. Like I can't call up my parents and say, hey, I'm gonna come, do you wanna come over? Cause it's really me yeah. driving over and then yeah. parking in their driveway. So I kind of miss that permanent mm -hmm. place where people feel comfortable just coming and going. And also for me, I can be really introverted. So I love people, but I also love my own space. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's a bit harder in the van. So it's not that you don't respect it or that we well, don't get it. Sometimes you just, just want to Netflix and hang out, right? We don't so have there, Wi Fi. There's times, where, yeah, that's an issue. And especially in Canada, <laughs> in the States, there's a little bit more affordable Wi Fi, but yeah, in Canada, yeah, but you really, yeah. you're suffering to the, to the mobile data plans. Um, another thing would probably be just the, the when you get sick. Like when you're, when you're not feeling well and you want the hot water and the toilet and the shower yeah. and to, honestly that's I really don't want it to discourage anyone with those responses mm. because it's as easy as booking an Airbnb then for the right. weekend which we recently did because Eamon was really sick yeah. Yeah. and that's only happened once in our year and it's like okay and then you yeah. and then you appreciate it so much more when you get back in the van you're like oh I missed our house and you let's know? adventure again. Yeah, let's keep going. So when it comes to van life versus, let's say, RV life mm. and stuff, what are some of the pros that you find of having, I guess, a smaller vehicle versus an RV? Yeah, so just to give you guys an idea, this van that we're in, it fits in a parking spot, like comfortably. So you can drive this in the city and cruise in if you need to go to the bank you know, parallel park it. It was one of the and biggest reasons we went with it because yeah. we wanted to do a lot of city um, sales and stuff for mm. our business. We wanted to, for me to be comfortable yeah. driving it and stuff as well. And like I've seen that just from like traveling around with you guys like today and a little yeah. bit yesterday, it's just like, it's so, like you were saying, it's so stealthy, like, right? Yes. Yeah. So that's the biggest thing, right? Compared to an RV where you're a little bit victim to the RV parks. You mm -hmm. can't just park on the side of the road. You know, you stand out like a sore thumb. Mm -hmm. So having it's this- obvious you're sleeping in that vehicle. <laughs> even within the sprinter world, like we wanted to keep this very stealth with, you know, limited RV accessories yeah. and- No ladder, all yeah. that kind of stuff. So, so stealth, so It yeah. looks like a plumber's van. <laughs> Exactly, and often like I, d I don't think people know we're living in here and as the movement grows I think in Ontario we are some of the only people wow. living in a van at least that I know of yeah. and then we came out to BC be <laughs> so Oh, BC is like oh so you live in a van who cares what like what kind of van is it? Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, cool. It's no big deal Whereas in Ontario everyone thinks you need help because you live in a van. They're like are you okay? Like <laughs> So very different mentalities in the in the yeah, yeah, but I don't know if we even derailed your question there. No, we I mean, it. no, yeah. that's, that's it. So then sleeping, yeah. where do you park your van though? Like at night? Yeah. Like, so there's an park? app that we love for anyone who's thinking about van life. It's called iOverlander and it's an awesome user generated platform where you just say, hey, I parked here, I had no issues. Um, the people were cool. So I paid $5 lot, for there's this. There's a lot of like forest roads or you service know, roads. Service roads, stuff like that. But then there's also like little camping spots that are just off of a logging road or so people add to it and it's mm -hmm. it really We've stayed in some incredible places. Yeah. So really and truly. For free. Interesting. Yes. All free. So yes. like is it like a mixture of just like parking inside the road? Like Walmart's on there. Yeah. So anybody can stay at Walmart mm -hmm. for a night. Um, that's a really great option. We do especially that. if you had an RV, yeah. if you had a bigger rig. Yeah. But a lot of the times with the stealth is like we'll just pull up late at night, shut the curtains, go right to bed. We're not partying and making a lot yeah. of noise. Mm -hmm. We just look like another vehicle on the street. Yeah, we do lots of, a mix of suburban kind of sleeping 
amazing forest sleeping. We've slept on the beach in Mexico, for example. Uh, Two months of just bliss of pulling up to a private beach, essentially. It was really incredible. And then you also have to mix in the Walmart and the not so glamorous places, but yeah. So then how often do you have to hook up or can you be off grid for? We never have to. We're totally off grid, it's just water. Okay. So we have three five gallon things of water and that's our, our biggest limitation. We have solar panels on the roof, mm -hmm. so the whole system is, is off grid yeah. and we are hooked up to the alternator. So as, as we're driving, we're charging our house batteries. So we're running our laptops, our, our phones, our fans, lights, everything you need. Wow, the Vitamix. Yeah. Big one. And the Vitamix. The yeah, Vitamix. I've heard the, the Vitamix is a big draw. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it does. Sometimes it if it's been raining for four days and we're not driving, the Vitamix yeah. becomes off limits because it draws too much. But we we don't have issues with solar. Everything really. else, we're good. Even with the smoke, it's been a little bit trickier, I think, mm. currently. But it's fine because we And then we much. have a, a diesel heater. So the diesel heater Ooh. runs off of the diesel line for the car. Yeah, I was so. going to ask about that. I was like, it's great when it's summer mm -hmm. yeah. and it's sunny and you can like open the doors and windows yes. and it feels so spacious. Like we've actually had to close some of the doors just so the light wouldn't be crazy yeah. Yeah. in the video. But like when we were, they were opening, it just feels so much bigger than the space that's in. Totally. Like, what do you do when it's raining and yeah, it's winter? Not as much fun, I'll yeah. tell you that right now. I think something about our layout that I really love is that we don't have a fixed bed. So we can push this up and as soon as it's a rainy morning or a really cold morning, I'm like, okay, get out of bed. We need to put it into couch mode just because this little extra square footage yeah. feels like so much space. Um, but yeah, it's definitely, there's definitely a shift that happens with the seasons. It's a little more depressing. In it's winter. cold. <laughs> it's cold. So we have like this little diesel heater that's underneath the, the passenger seat and it, it's, it's got a thermostat. It's called an S bar D2 heater. And so you basically set the temperature and it, it, it's very spot. toasty so it, it, in here. It, we've had it at minus 30 and oh. warm enough to sleep in here. So it's fine to sleep. It's just about like you said, you're not opening your doors. Yeah. You're kind of in and out really quickly. As soon as you quickly. open that slider door, all your heat just goes out. Gone. Yeah. 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 So it's just about. Um, I mean, we have our office space, so we're lucky if we're in Toronto. Mm -hmm. It's it, you know we can be inside the office and stuff like that and really just sleep in here. Mm -hmm. But that's definitely something to think about if you're in Canada or somewhere that gets pretty cold. Yeah. That you know just preparing for it. There are heaters. There's like tiny small portable heaters. There's ways to do it, but at the end of the day, a lot of van lifers just go south. That's true. <laughs> so, in general, what yeah. are your favorite things about van life that you've come mm. to love? Like, just a couple things, with, like the lifestyle or... So many in general. Things. Freedom! <laughs> <laughs> it is really freeing to not have to pack a bag or worry about anything and look at each other and say, hey, do you want to go here for the weekend? Yeah. yeah. And you have everything you need with you. It's a really, really cool feeling. I love that we also built it with our own two hands. It's There's something really satisfying about laying in bed at night and just, I don't know, it feels like home. And the, the like water home. pump's not working, so I get there with my tools and you know, I, I know, you know exactly, exactly how to fix it, to right? Yeah. So that, you're right, there's a little bit of um, just reassuring safety in knowing that you can fix it when it breaks down. I mean, the engine is a little bit more complicated, but obviously that's something you'll have to deal with if, you, if your car does break this down. That's true. And what do you, like, I guess you are driving it quite a bit too. Like, how is it driving the van? Yeah, so I mean, that's that's a big thing is you're gonna invest money into building out a van, you wanna make sure that it has a good heart. Mm -hmm. We we had a big issue in Mexico where our motor totally cropped out and mm -hmm. it made amazing content, so feel free to go check that out. <laughs> but we had to uh, tow the van back to the border because yeah. the Mexicans didn't work on the same type of engine. Okay and get it fixed in Texas, then we ended up going back to Mexico. So that's else. probably one of the worst parts about van life is mm -hmm. when your car does break down, it's your house, it's our office, it's our yeah, living so space. It's so your car, your transportation, mm -hmm. it's everything. Your stock. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then safety. Yep. What do you guys do about that? Go to the gym. <laughs> gym? Don't mess with me. I've no. never felt unsafe, not, not once. We've had really not a lot of negative uh, experiences. Mm -hmm. I mean, we there are people that have knocked our van in the middle of the night, and that's kind of terrifying. We were in New York one time, and we had this this whole like squad come and like sit on the back of the van, and they like started partying and smoking and stuff like that. And okay. Beck and I were sleeping. Yeah, and we're like, it's so true. Just be quiet. We we're in Brooklyn, here. New York, and I'm like, okay, we're fine, we're totally fine. And then they were like kind of bouncing on the back step thing, and I'm like, oh my, oh my gosh, they don't know we're in yeah. here. But it, it, like it was, they were just doing their own we thing. We could have like fun. maybe clicked the keys and flashed the lights, but then you're drawing more attention to the vans. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Overall, we've had 
positive good. experiences. But I, again, Eamon kind of mentioned it is we're not going out and partying and, and drawing attention, like especially when we know where we're gonna go in if it's a neighborhood to park. We'll have the blinds closed already. We've already done the dishes. The lights are out, you know. So we're rolling up. Yeah. Even at we're Walmart, like you're 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 you don't have the best crowd usually at Walmart late night. So mm -hmm. um, depending on the Walmart, it is. So we're not going to go in and turn all the lights open and have the door open and people can see. Oh wow, that's a nice nice van. Draw attention to yourself. Yeah. You just mm -hmm. you want to remain under the radar. Back to that stealth. stealth totally. Mode. Exactly. Totally. Go into stealth mode. So then. For the first timers, what were some of the things that you kind of wish you knew right off the bat? Hmm. So come with some of those, the things that you just, you wish, you're like, oh man, I wish I just knew a little bit more about that, or I wish I did that. I like Overlander is a big one. I was one. gonna say we didn't, that. We didn't learn. So we didn't know about we the app about. for almost a year of it. So I think there's a huge initial stress of where am I gonna sleep? How am mm -hmm. I gonna find parking? Yeah. Especially if you're trying to do it without paying at campsites and mm -hmm. things. So when we found out about that app, it was game changer. So I would love to know about that app. Um, I think what we did wrong in our build was we didn't plan for the seasons enough. So we didn't have a heater until it was almost too late and we needed that heater. Mm -hmm. We thought way more about how tall we were as opposed to, so Eamon's six one right now, if we had done any more floor insulation, he wouldn't be able to stand up straight. Mm. So we prioritized that, which was fine in summer. And then again, coming into winter, it was like, we don't have any insulation in the floor. Mm. Um, so I think there's, there's, two sides of that, it's like and what we would do about our build. Yeah, there's then, like build things that I would probably change. Mm -hmm. um, but overall, like the idea of living in a van, I think it's super important to be realistic. Mm -hmm. And you know, if, if that's hard for you to do, I would rent one and, and get a taste for what it's like. Because mm -hmm. yeah, you can look at our Instagram and wow, this looks amazing, beautiful, but there's a lot of downsides, just like travel, right? Yeah, like travel I, people look yeah. at your Instagram and like, oh my God, Nadine, you must be living the dream, right? <laughs> yeah. And it's like, yeah, and you there's are. a lot of flights, like, We are a having of our numbers. version of, of course. the dream, but there's yeah. of course You gotta be realistic. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Pros and cons to everything. Exactly. Yes. I really like the idea of testing it out beforehand. Yes. So you guys can borrow a van if you want. Take it for a week. I think really that would be want? such yeah. a fun collab. One of these things is like <laughs> uh, rent out the van. a house swap. You know, yeah. that'd be uh, fun. Yeah. Super inspiring. Did we, did we get you excited, or do we did make you think twice about van life? No, it, like? you got me excited. I mean, just okay. being in the van itself has mm. got me super excited. So, guys, yells, <laughs> it's time for the van tour because you need to see Let's this van it. so you can get just as excited about this as I am. I can't wait to show you guys. Let's do it. <laughs> So this is our van. It's a 2008 Sprinter van. Ta-da! So you can see it looks very stealth and cargo on the outside. You wouldn't even know we live inside, but come on in and we'll give you a little tour. So one of my favorite features of the van is actually our swivel seat. It swivels um, passenger seat front to back and it really just opens up our living, dining room, kitchen space. And then this is our kitchen. We really wanted it to feel like a home because we are in the van full time. So it's kind of got a small condo feel to it. Really large sink. Sometimes I'll wash my hair in here because as you know, we do not have a shower. Um, and yeah, just overhead cupboards, kind of packed with good stuff. We've got three five gallon water tanks, fresh water, and it runs off into our gray water in the back there. We've got a propane tank for our stove and we've got a 55 liter Dometic fridge. So uh, a little small for our foodie liking, but it does the trick. And it smells like raw onion, sorry everybody. Good thing you don't have smell of vision there. And that's pretty much wrapping up the kitchen, of course, our beautiful banana hammock, which we love. And my biggest thing about moving into the van was I really wanted to bring in our high-speed blender. We do lots of smoothies in the morning and cooking, so I absolutely love our Vitamix. Over to Eamon for the bedroom office area. This is the bedroom. It's pretty small, but it works. So the bed is really nice that when you're living in a small space, it converts into a couch as well. So that's kind of our living room as well. Now that I have this pole out, I'll show you our table. So that guy flips down and that can serve a number of different purposes. So it actually is a really good height for a working table um, or a bed can chop some veggies and you can also just sit it and use it as a dining table. So that pops up. So the bed just pulls right out and comes down just like that. And then we have sheets and pillows that are stored in here. A nice little laundry area. And then I'll show you the garage. So this is the garage. This is where we keep all of our toys. And that just pulls out. We've got a nice big little storage area. 
gotta have your boosted board, basketball, you know, all the essentials. When Eamon says our little toys, you know it means his <laughs> toys, right? <laughs> There's a little bit more storage in the crevices here, so we keep some of our hiking shoes. Um, there's some Launches. camping chairs and stuff like that. Tripod. That's it. That's our van. And back. Van life. Van life. I am so pumped now. I don't know about you guys, but thank you so much for answering all my questions, giving us this awesome Absolutely. tour of your van. Thank I you. I know for you have a million you. videos all about the little details, so if you guys want more in depth van tours, literally anything. <laughs> Or if you, you just want to hang out with us. Or hang out with them, follow their vlogs, which we were doing one in Kelowna. Yes. So we did a video all in here in Kelowna, which I will leave all the links down below. So go subscribe to them, check them out, go watch more of their van life videos, and go watch your Kelowna video. Yeah, it was fun, huh? Yeah. We had an amazing day. I'm so happy we were able to link out. This was such a good time. It's been so, really fun. Yes. So yeah, thanks again, guys. Yeah, of right. course. Bye. Catch till, on the road. Till Europe. Van Life Europe. Still Van Life Europe. I love that you're saying it out loud now. Yes, that's how you make it happen. Yes. We'll see All you right. Van Life Europe.